Wow, it's bright. What are you up to? I am downsizing. I'm going through and pulling out the worst of my work clothes, stuff that doesn't fit right anymore, stuff that I just don't wear and don't need. And since I'm going to be cleaning this out completely, sorting through all of my clothing and belongings, maybe I want to, at this point, decide to undertake some strip lighting in here because this one light only lights one compartment and um, it's just not very functional. It also is very bulbous and takes up space when I'm pulling stuff in and out. I rip the lens off regularly and I think it might be time for some changes. That looks like fun. It's hot. We need to put the air conditioning back on. That was more AC noise. <laughs> it's not actually hot so much as just really humid with the rain. It's just... Yeah. Plus I keep making you tea and the windows keep fogging up. It's true. Yeah. It's all your fault. I've gone through all of my clothing. It's an awful process. I hate doing it. So I've tried on all of my skirts and dresses and dress wear for fitment, making sure things still fit since I don't wear those things very often. In light of Shauna having done her closet sort over here, I'm going to now do mine. So at this point I need to get rid of anything that's indecent and also kind of the worst tier of work clothes. These pants aren't long for the world, I don't think. Well, those aren't indecent. Those are just torn. No, but also um, Shauna ordered some iron-ons and made me a couple of work shirts, so I need to make make room for some of them. Working through the piles. I just got everything cleaned out. The shelves are all wiped down. And we're ready to move on to phase two. That closet fits an awful lot of stuff. It does. Next, we plan to take some strip lighting and run it top to bottom in the closets. And I'll put a link in the description below of what we use. We have installed the rest of this reel. It comes in like 16 feet in other locations and what we do is we solder on little leads and I'll put a link to the leads and the lights that we use. You can see they're dimmable and we've put them over the sink and over the dinette. We don't quite have enough of the strip lighting to go um, the full length so what we're going to do is we are going to take this off the spool I'm going to take the length that we have and sort of match up the ends and we're going to get a vague approximation of equal length here and Andrew's just going to use scissors and cut on the line. The first step is to cut them to the length that you want. Now if you cut them on the black line that will expose, um, it might be hard to see on camera, but there's two tiny copper points here which are the leads that need to be resoldered. So the next step here will be to just trim back a little bit of this rubber to expose the leads. Now these clamps aren't really clamped to anything. I just put them on here to stabilize the piece because it wants to twist. Just as ballast. Yeah, just as ballast. My next step is to get a drip of hot solder on each one of these leads. I should say this soldering iron is a little bit oversized for what we're doing, but it's the one I have. At this point, I've got some extra solder now on the tips of these two leads, and I'm gonna come back with a soldering gun and try to heat them up to drip onto and connect to those points. So one of these is now connected, and I've gotta come back and do the second one. So we're gonna to touch the second lead, and hopefully it goes quickly so I don't heat everything up too much. Fourth step here is to just quickly check that everything is tight, um, give them a little tug. And I've got a nine volt battery here. It's an easy way to just kind of check. The wire leads kit that we bought comes with little silicone ends. And once we've got these fully installed in the closets, we're gonna come back and put a little silicone in here, slide them in place, and that should help to protect the connections. Just gonna have the door off while we're working here. 
four Phillips screws. Let me get that screwdriver. I'm gonna just strip these connections and connect the light strip using Wago connectors. Um, just to test where I want the light strip to be. It's the idea, we just gotta figure out where to put it. All the bays are lit. We kind of have proof of concept here. Unfortunately, we lose the ability to put it behind this post when it goes to the last, last shelf. We've determined that to put the strip lighting down the edge of the closet, we just need to take a little bit of a notch out of each shelf and the shelf cleat that holds it up. This is the very high bond sticky tape. I'll put a link in the description below. Again, you've seen us use this in a bunch of different videos. We're struggling over here to get it started. But what we're gonna do is I'm gonna stick it on here, in theory. Is it starting to stick? Yeah, it's just gonna hold it, I think, in place until we can get the clips on it. I really like how every cubby is now lit, and at the end of that light strip, Andrew connected two Wagos, and then more wire to go up and over behind this, and come back down to the original lighting, with two more Wagos, and I think a very simple, I don't know if you can see that 12 volt switch and it's round which means we can just use like a drill bit to bore out a hole right here because I can reach the back side so we'll bore out a hole we'll be able to push this in and connect the wiring right up I've seen a lot of people use these really super awesome like latch type type <laughs> I've seen people use these really awesome latch style switching where you open the cabinet and the light comes on. And maybe in the kitchen or something that would be fine, but I don't always have all of my uh, window coverings closed. So if it's dark in here and I need to like do a quick change or something like that and I open this and all of a sudden I I'm the only thing lit. <laughs> I, that's not a thing that I'm really looking for. Around right there. Yeah. Right now, the lights are running with no switch. So this is just a hard connection running by. What I'm gonna do is cut the white wire, which is the ground, and run it through this switch so the lights will then be switched. All right. All right. So that's the connections made. Now I actually gotta tighten it up and neaten it up. Cool. Awesome. And there's that. You can actually see me stuffing things around the closet bar right now. We left that, um, if we need to hang something, all we have to do is remove a shelf or two shelves to be able to hang in this space. Um, so it's still there, just in case. So on my side, you can see, I have one cubby. One very well lit cubby. Right. At this point, Sean is doing the emptying and then we're gonna come back and um, wire it all up on the left side. I've gone ahead and modified all three shelves. Pencil here shows there's clearance now for the light strip to go by. And um, I guess everybody's shelves are different. So this video is really about just kind of demonstrating how to use those strip lights and kind of get the most out of them. You can buy an entire roll and cut them up and use them wherever, however, and make it work. On my side, I had a hollow behind so I could put the switch in the side and had space to run the wires behind it. Unfortunately, we don't have that on Shauna's side. The best place with a hollow is up here. So I'm gonna put the switch up top.
composite lights are installed. I've put all my stuff back in it and it looks great. And my bays are really well lit now. One of the reasons I picked the spool that I did is because the diodes, the parts for the, the that produce the light on this particular brand has like a coating that is a diffuser on the front. Meaning instead of having each little diode show like these lights do, it gets rid of that individual light look and it diffuses it really nicely down. So I think that these, this particular style of rope light does really what I want it to do with that nice soft glow 